Now, this is the part where I wanted to talk about something that's a little more production oriented and production friendly. Specifically, I wanted to talk about how we're dealing with the mech here. So we're bringing in all of the animated information here. And this is going to work fine for our scene, but maybe it's not the most production friendly, meaning you wouldn't want to be doing look dev on this mech in this scene. Uh, you'd want to be doing look dev somewhere else and applying this animation to a mech that had already had look dev assigned to it and had materials and check shaders and all of that other stuff sorted out. And I want to kind of show you a little bit of what that workflow might look like. So I have the other mech here. And instead of grabbing the animated one, I'm going to grab the rest pose. So now what we get here is our non-animated mech. And you can see when I select any of his stuff here, we don't have any green values, everything's blue. We have the additional color information, which I had intentionally put on the mech. And this is because I wanted to show you something that's kind of important here, which is called layering. And it's part of the USD concept of being able to take the things that are different from one branch and layer those changes onto another branch, uh, a branch that exists earlier in our scene graph or our layer stack, so to speak. Um, and it's pretty simple. All we would have to do is do something called a sublayer. So when I sublayer it, I'm going to take my Mac and put it here. If this was written out to disk, we would just grab that file and plug that in. But since it's going to be a live SOP, we're going to connect that right in here. And I am not going to change anything because the sublayer type is set to files and inputs, meaning it's going to look here and it's going to look here. We could change this to only look for inputs or only look for files if we want. And now when I highlight this, what we're going to see is something really interesting. We are going to see the things that were different about this applied to this here. Now this works because these two have the exact same hierarchy. If I change one little thing here, like I call this mech two, for instance, whoops, sorry, wrong thing to change. If I change this in, input here and call that, that mech two, we break that connection. They don't work. They're two different objects. We open the shot up. Suddenly we've got mech two here doing something and we've got mech one doing something and they're not the same thing anymore. But if we have the exact same information here and we layer one on top of the other, we keep the things that there was no, in USD terms, it's called an opinion. This layer did not have an opinion about the color of the mech. So the color stayed. It did, however, have an opinion about the point positions, the normals, and the velocity information of that mech. And it authored that right here into the scene. It's a very, very powerful concept and something that really needs to be understood with USD is that the idea of opinions and layering. And let me show you a little bit about how that would work. I'm going to go back into object context here, I'm going to unpin that, and I'm going to go back to my Mac. Now looking over here, I have color. So I've said now that the color here is purple. Now, previously, we didn't have an opinion about the color of that layer. We do now. Let's go back into our stage and see what happened. All of a sudden, all the color information that was here is overwritten. And that's because this layer, and if I select one of these objects here, this layer had an opinion about the color. So just so you know, in case no one's told you this before, the CD color attribute from Houdini will automatically get converted into what's called display color, which is the USD terminology for that. So when you're looking for color information, you want to be looking for display color. But the point remains the same. We had an opinion about the color. The color has changed and it's overridden anything here. So the way that the layering works 
is it always takes the stronger opinion. See, subletter position here is the strongest position. Now we can change that to the weakest position. And what will happen is this was weaker than this. So everything reverted down to the weaker position here. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to our mech, turn off color and go back to our stage. And there we go. So now what we have is a scene that represents something a little bit more like what we'd see in production. This will be much more apparent when we start authoring materials on here. So we'll kind of work a little bit more in a production friendly way. And the next step in this whole thing will be assigning materials to our geometry.